This is the first video in Section 1, Introduction to Chemistry, as part of the Australian Curriculum Unit 1 in Senior Chemistry, Chemical Fundamentals. In this section we're going to go over some chemistry basics, many of which you may have encountered in junior years. The purpose of this section is to get everyone up to the same standard before we tackle the more complex stuff, and to fill in any little gaps that you may have in your chemistry knowledge so far. So, let's begin. The universe is made of energy and matter. And we chemists are interested in both of these things, but for us it all begins with matter. Matter is stuff that has mass, that can be weighed. That's solids and liquids and gases and plasmas. And all matter is made of tiny, tiny particles. We can divide matter into two classes, pure substances and mixtures. In pure substances, all the particles are identical. And in mixtures, there are different kinds of particles rubbing shoulders with each other. For example, salt, table salt, is a pure substance. All the particles in salt are salt particles. Water is also a pure substance. All the particles in it are water, as long as it's actually pure water. But if you mix salt and water, then it becomes a mixture, and the salt particles and the water particles are mixed together. They don't change their identity. The water particles remain water particles, and the salt particles are still salt. So they can be separated back into pure substances. For instance, you could evaporate the water to leave the salt behind. They're simply jumbled up together like different Lego blocks in a box. Depending on whether the different particles are mixed evenly or not, we can distinguish two types of mixtures. In homogeneous mixtures, the different particles are thoroughly mixed, so that if you looked at one part of the mixture, you'd see roughly the same types and numbers of particles as in any other part of the mixture. Salty water is a homogeneous mixture. We would call it a solution since the salt ions are evenly distributed through the water. Many metal alloys are like this as well, with atoms of one metal randomly distributed among atoms of another. In heterogeneous mixtures, on the other hand, the particles are not evenly distributed. Particles of one kind can be clumped or organised. Muddy water is an example of this. The clumps of dirt in muddy water are large clusters of particles, and in whipped cream, each bubble in the cream is a clump of air. If the clumps are small enough, mixtures of these kind are called colloids. A well-mixed salad dressing or smoke and some gels are examples of colloids. So, matter is made of particles, but what are those particles? Well, we call them atoms. Atoms are ridiculously tiny, about 1 times 10 to the minus 10 metres across. That means that you can fit about 6 million of them across the width of a human hair. Atoms are themselves composed of even tinier particles, which we call subatomic particles. Those are protons, neutrons and electrons, and they're arranged roughly like this. The protons and neutrons are clumped together in the nucleus, in the centre of the atom, and the electrons are whizzing around the outside. Now, this is a simplified picture, and we're going to get into more detail about what an atom is really like later on, but it'll serve us just for now. For the moment though, let's just represent single atoms as balls, since they are roughly spherical. Different atoms have different sizes and masses, and this has to do with the fact that they're made of different numbers of protons, neutrons and electrons. So some are lighter and some are heavier, some are bigger and some are smaller. As I said, we'll go into that in detail later on. If you start joining atoms together, chemists say the atoms are bonded together, if you join them together into groups, then those groups are called molecules. So a molecule is any group of two or more atoms that are bonded together. Some substances are made up of individual atoms, while others are made up of molecules. Okay, so everything's made up of atoms or molecules, and substances can be defined as either pure or mixtures. So now let's look at the distinction between elements and compounds. Both elements and compounds are pure substances. Remember, that means that all the particles in these substances are identical. So the difference between elements and compounds has to do with the kinds of atoms that they're made from. An element is a substance that's made entirely of a single kind of atom. For instance, helium is an element, and this means that it's made up only of one kind of atom, the helium atom. Oxygen is also an element. It happens to be made up of molecules, but each molecule consists of two identical oxygen atoms joined together. So in a container of oxygen gas, although it's full of molecules, there is still only one kind of atom present. They just happen to be hanging around in pairs. 
Note that on the periodic table the symbol for oxygen is just O. That's when we're talking about the oxygen atom by itself. But when you encounter oxygen gas in the real world, it always exists as molecules, so it's written as O2 to indicate that each molecule consists of two oxygen atoms joined together. Gold is also an element. At room temperature it's a solid, so the atoms are stuck together in a regular arrangement called a lattice. But if you were to melt the gold, the atoms would separate and move about independently. And if you heated the liquid gold further, you could eventually get gold gas, consisting of individual gold atoms flying around, like with the helium. This is also why we write gold as simply Au. Although in its solid version the atoms are stuck together, it becomes clear when you heat it up that they are still individual atoms and not bonded together in molecules. In contrast to elements, we have compounds. Remember, compounds are also pure substances. They're made up of identical particles. But in the case of compounds, each particle is a molecule that's made up of more than one kind of atom bonded together. Water is a compound. All of its particles are identical, but each particle is a molecule that's made up of two hydrogen atoms bonded to one oxygen atom. So there are two different kinds of atoms in the one molecule, so it must be a compound. Water is a liquid at room temperature, so I've drawn the molecules close together. Carbon monoxide is another compound, but it's a gas. Its molecules are made of one carbon and one oxygen joined together, hence the name. And finally, table salt, sodium chloride, is also a compound. It's made up of sodium and chlorine bonded together in a lattice. This is not strictly a molecule, it's known as an ionic compound, and later in this course we'll explore in more detail the difference between ionic compounds and molecular compounds such as water and carbon monoxide. For now, you just need to understand that because it involves more than one kind of atom bonded together, it's a compound. Okay, one last thing to look at before we finish up here. For most elements, we can assume that they're made from single individual atoms. So when you write down the formula for sodium, it's simply Na, meaning a single Na atom. And if you write the formula for helium, it's He, one helium atom. However, there are seven elements that are an exception to this rule because they always hang around as molecules rather than individual atoms. All seven of them form diatomic molecules, two atoms, diatomic, uh, two atoms joined together. Uh, and they are hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, chlorine, bromine, and iodine. All of these seven are diatomic when you encounter them in the real world. On the periodic table, they're shown the same as all the other elements because the periodic table is like a dictionary of all the possible atoms. It doesn't give you direct information about how the atoms react or what form they occur in naturally. Although, as you become more familiar with the periodic table, you'll be able to infer information like this from it. However, if you ever have to write the formula of any one of these seven elements as it actually exists in nature, for instance, if you're writing a chemical equation, then these seven must be written to show that they are diatomic. Learn these seven and know them off by heart because they will turn up over and over again. Okay, so we've now distinguished pure substances and mixtures, atoms and molecules, and elements and compounds. Your task for this video is to draw a flowchart to classify substances uh, that uses all of those six terms. Pure substances, mixtures, atoms, molecules, elements, and compounds. There are many ways of doing a flowchart. Uh, try to come up with something that makes the relationships between the six terms as clear as possible. See you next time.